When you start a new job and you have a bare site and a bare drawing, that is the most exciting thing. That keeps me going too, in that I always love that process of design. And whilst you do all these other things in practice, I do really love designing and drawing. To have a client that is happy is the most satisfying thing. The best projects are when you've got a, a good client, good architect, a good engineer, a good everything else, that they all work together. Beverly was awarded the 2005 Mary Marnie Griffin Award in recognition of her commitment to the profession of architecture and her promotion of women in architecture. I think many young women take for granted a lot of what they find in the profession now. And, I mean, I found it so shocking reading about her experiences with the Petersham TAFE job. A lot of men just won't give you the projects because you're a woman. I kind of worked on it in a way that was wriggling through the back door. I, I got it by default, nobody caring about it as a project. If an architect doesn't follow through a project through all of the stages, it, it simply doesn't remain the same. And at the time they had a policy that the design architect should always do that, but when it came to my building, I was suddenly told that some guy was going to be doing it. And um, I didn't like this. Shortly prior to this, the anti-discrimination legislation had been enacted and I just said, well, OK, I'll go to the anti-discrimination board and I'll fight you. Well, then they changed their mind, but not without another one-hour interview, not without another discussion about how I would look after my son, how I would do my shopping, God knows what. None of them would give me any help. None of them would let me go on site to see what happened on other projects. At the beginning of every meeting, every week, for six weeks, this head supervising architect would say, I can't say that because we have a lady present. On the sixth week, I said, if you're not going to say fuck, I am. You know, it, it had such power to make you feel separate and different and so silly. I was involved in the women's movement from the early 70s and I became a member of Women's Liberation in um, 1970 and so Seeing those women and, and working with them made me realise that women could get together and push to change things. My mother came from a line of women that had always done what they had wanted to do. She was a doctor and she was one of 13 children. My grandfather, her, her father, he, um, of these 13 children, eight were women and he educated all of them. So from this grandfather, I think it was instilled into us that we could do anything. There was, whilst it might be a bit hard and you mightn't do things the normal way, as a woman, I always believed I could achieve what I wanted to achieve personally, even though lots of the women beside me at school and so on didn't think that. There were very few jobs in architecture in Melbourne, especially for women. And the women at that time were only being paid half of what the guys were being offered in architectural offices. Sydney had a very buoyant economy and Melbourne didn't. a roll of drawings in my hand and visiting the site and measuring the site. And I mean, it was like going back to the classic architects of having their own practice of sort of a hundred years ago in a way.
that Bullio is for um, a woman who comes from that area near Berrima. And I, th I actually think it's the best building I've ever designed. The building had to be designed in a way that it was semi-prefabricated. It also had to be vandal proof because it's an area where um, hoons go shooting pigs. I'm not sure if I'd be happy staying there, down there alone myself, but my client is. <laughs> She's a very capable architect. She could, she could d devote her life to just doing great architecture, but she's actually chosen to also give, you know, give herself to doing these other things for the greater good. huge problems of planning our cities and at the level of public transport, the environment and so on. There are only governments starting to look at this SEP 65 legislation for multi-unit housing. It's a fantastic initiative. I'm personally involved in the design review panels of that process. And what's been really good about that is that the Developers are starting to get better architects to design their projects because they see them getting through council quicker. I took part in this program with teaching teachers how to teach kids design last Wednesday. I mean, here you telling these people about a process they have n no experience of, most of them, and you're exciting them. You, they you can tell that they're really interested in what they're doing. And the same when you go to the schools and show the kids, talk to the kids, tell them what to look at, tell them how to draw, telling them to get the biggest bit of paper and the fattest crayon and, and just have fun and, and draw whatever you want to draw. I guess when you kind of get outside of the architecture scene to interface with another discipline and you can get an excitement and an appreciation of design and architecture and you do see it on that broader level. That, that's lovely. Beverly's approach has been to, to get um, capable women involved even if they don't have the experience because once they have the experience that affects all aspects of their lives. Money Award is it's obviously great for the winners and it's fabulous to have won it this year but there's a lot more to it than that. It's creating a cohort of women within the Institute that can understand the problems that women are having. I have got to know previous winners and people like Louise Cox and Jennifer Taylor. It's fantastic. And, you know, it's a great privilege to know them. And hopefully the jury, the winners themselves, all of that can be a, like a mentoring process for younger women.